Welcome to Lifestyle Strength, your guide to mastering health and well-being in the real world. I'm Ariel, a massage therapist with over a decade of experience in holistic health. And I'm here with Lucas, a seasoned fitness coach who's transformed the lives of hundreds in Northwest Arkansas. We're here to share real stories and expert insights about embracing a healthy lifestyle while balancing the everyday hustle. Join us as we explore practical ways to achieve wellness and thrive amidst life's challenges. Let's dive in. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Lifestyle Strength. I'm already uh, doing our intro, but we have a new intro if you haven't noticed that. Today, we have a special guest, David Shirley. How's it going? Very well. Very well. Thank you for being on the podcast. I'm excited about it. I'm ready to go. I'm excited, too. (laughs) I know you are involved in a lot of things. That's an understatement. Yeah. So I know you own the Proving Ground in Russellville, Arkansas. You own Invictus Powerlifting. And you run Southern Powerlifting Federation. Well, I'm the vice president. Or vice president. Okay. Yes. Yes. I don't run it. I run my corner of it. I wonder about, what, seven states, I think, something like that. We're in seven states. Okay. So we stay moving. Can you... That's not even all of it, but that's, that's a good portion of it. Okay. Can you tell me... How that all, I don't even know. Um, backstory, guys, I have been in David's life for quite a few years. Oh, long time. Long wow. time. Back when I started Competitor's Edge, one of my first athletes I got in with was powerlifters. And it was hard. They're stubborn. <laughs> but meeting David made it a lot easier when he was running Southern Powerlifting. Talking about like getting massages or uh, just working actually with massaging the back? Yeah, hard. exactly. Actually, both. both. Yeah. Uh, working on powerlifters and convincing them that recovery would be good for them of all athletes was super hard. And it's as the sport has evolved into kind of... Uh, as an actual competition sport, mm-hmm. people see the value of it now. But it's taken 10 years for me to get to this place where they're always hitting me up before an event going, hey, Errol, you're going to be at this event? You're going to be at this event? But I would definitely say a lot of that came from meeting David and Dawn, oh, okay. not seen in the podcast here. Um, she's here for moral support, but she kind of is the back face to SPF. And I got really more involved with powerlifters when I met David. So I'm just curious how that kind of came to be. Uh, us meeting or just about no the the me using you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's me a different using story. You. <laughs> right, that's a different story. Uh, no, how you came to be involved with Southern Powerlifting Federation, and then what? even with the Proving Ground, how your gym came to be. Oh goodness, we're gonna be here. Oh. <laughs> I like it. The story time about that. Yes, we love stories. Well, the the, the Southern Powerlifting Federation, we used to lift in another federation. We had an issue there. Uh, that's actually where my original injury came from. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, that was kind of a big deal for us back then. And uh, Jesse Rogers at the time, the owner of the uh, SPF at the time, he came in and uh, he helped us out. We needed a place to lift, and he was like, well, well sure, you know. Yeah. Fun. And so we got in with him, and over the years of lifting with him, he just always treated us honest and square. We didn't have any issues, and we uh, we were in Branson, Missouri doing a meet, and he got sick. Actually ended up in the hospital. Oh, wow. And it's kind of funny. I, I just walked up to him and said, leave, go, bye. And I said, we've got this. And so my, the approving ground crew at the time, we just took the whole meet over. So your gym, your gym was already established at that point. Yes. Okay. When, when, when that took place, we were, Don was looking this up on the way up here. We were established in uh, 2010. Wow. Now the, the, the main core group had been together for four or five years since it, even at that point. Okay. When, when we went out and we opened our own gym. So, wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, the core group there, we've been together for a long, close, getting close to 20 years. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So the, you have the gym. What made you decide to create a gym? Because you were a power lifter before all that, right? Oh, yeah. I'd set, we, would, we had set world records and, you know, we were running, uh, we were at Back to Basics, a local gym right there, Jamie McDougal. Okay. Oh. He, uh, 
Oh yeah, he's the one that pulled me out of my original, um, my original injury. He was didn't even know. Oh, he's a wonderful trainer. He's always been a wonderful trainer. He uh, he he's he knows what he's doing for sure. Uh, but anyway, he uh, uh, we started in uh, Dan Martin wanted to start a dojo at the time, and uh, I was running a construction crew and. Uh, a really successful one, and I was like, "Oh yeah, let's. That'll be fun." But he wanted a aspect of powerlifting in it, and mm -hmm. we were very much kind of disgusted with mainstream fitness, and no, we just didn't like people. <laughs> <laughs> we we didn't like people outside of our circle. So, uh, like I said, the business was doing well, and we had some extra money. So I was like, "Yeah, okay." That sounds like fun, and it was. It was a, it was great fun. So that's how the gym started. It was yes. just kind of a passion project. Yes, it. You know, we've got six thousand square foot now, and one hundred and seven pieces of equipment, or something like some weird number. Uh, but that's not what we wanted when we started. It just kind of took over. And ran. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's partly my fault. I, once I start with something, I have to push it. And it just kept pushing and kept pushing. Sounds like an athlete if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> so then how did Invictus Powerlifting come to be? That is a hilarious story, actually. Invictus Powerlifting came from Team Invictus, which came from Dan Martin. Oh. Oh. I had. I mean, this is all ever, news to me, even though you know I've been Dan around. Martin. I'm out of loop. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Martin, he was my, he was a, well, he was one of our training partners. And uh, if I had to be honest, there was other guys that were talking to me about it, but I was fascinated when I first got into the gym. I got into the gym because of the of a injury. And he was lifting, you know, and he was lifting in an equipment. And so he was this freak and, you know, he gets slapped across the face and here we'd go. And I was like, mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. <laughs> Attracted to the pain, you know. <laughs> well, it's I, I actually am. I, yeah. It's it's a weird deal with me. Uh, and anyway, so we started started there. And uh, Dan has a, a tattoo across the upper part of his abs, uh, and it's Invictus. Oh, coming from the Invictus. Yeah. Part. Which is, if you've ever read the poem, it's incredible. It, it's just an incredible, and it it really symbolizes what we were at the time and what we are even now, you know. Uh, so uh, it's not just a name for us. It it means something. It to holds us. meaning. It, so how did it evolve then when you decided to take a play off of that? Well, here we go. I, anything I start, I push on. Uh huh. So we we. We began this, and Jesse came to us, and we were doing meets at my gym after we got the gym started. And finally, uh, Jesse just came to me one day, and he just told me. He said, I'm not coming back here no more. He said, I'm done. I'm not coming back. You won't let me do nothing here. He said, from now on, you just run this meet. And so we were running. Wow. We were running three or four meets at the time. And uh, so we just started running our own meets. But... Here we go again. I like pushing on things. So, yeah. Uh, somebody talked to me about running a meet for them, and I was like, well, yeah, sure, that's no big deal. And so we started gathering stuff, blah, blah, blah. Hey, at this meet, I need you to bring a shirt. We need a meet shirt. Mm -hmm. And so the I love my power lifter shirt. Very no popular. It has mm -hmm. I shouldn't put her on. Yeah. Uh, that was our first shirt. Really? That was the very first that's, one? That's the OG shirt. I do see some ladies at these powerlifting events. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. doesn't matter what age. They be sporting that like it is like the top merch you could own. Yeah. I've caught them it's like, I got this from the president. <laughs> we didn't have meets going. I've seen them just go walking down the streets. That's awesome. Yeah, there has been thousands of those shirts sold. It, it's an amazing shirt. Uh, and we tried changing it and updating it, and they do not want it updated. <laughs> they do not want that shirt touched at all. And, so, and it's anyway. pretty simple. It's a pretty simple shirt because oh, yeah. it's straight to the point, which I feel like yeah. fits the mold of powerlifters, yeah. right? Like Every time we tried to upgrade it, yeah. it 
falls on its face. They want that shirt just like that, no other colors. That's what they want right there. So you don't only do T-shirts, though, right? Oh, no. What else do you do? Because is it targeted specifically for your power lifters? Well, as, the, as it grew, as the whole business itself grew, of course, we began to add other shirts. If you're uh, you're familiar with Kyle Hennington. Yes. For years, mm -hmm. he was my right hand. He's, yeah. he's an incredible, an incredible young man. He's so gifted and talented. And so he was designing shirts for us. I guess I should mention that. Uh, if you're familiar with him, uh, he's been on Naked and Afraid. Just, just recently, just guys. Recently. Go yeah. watch his Yeah, go, yep, check, go him watch him. check him on Instagram. And you can really check him out on Naked and Afraid. <laughs> yeah, right. And he talks about that. <laughs> we talk about his naked butt. We do. It's <laughs> yeah, yes, it's hilarious. Uh, but anyway, he was, you know, and still even today, he's stepped away from Invictus uh, now because he's so busy uh, out west. But, uh, but I still call on him. I guess I talk to him probably every week. He's one of the mm -hmm. closest friends, uh, especially in powerlifting. We we stay real close. But anyway, we he was the, you know, doing the shirts for us and stuff. And that part grew and grew and grew. And uh, then out of the blue, I made a contact uh, with a company overseas, and we began to talk to them about equipment, mm -hmm. about you know just simple stuff at first, wrist wraps and elbow sleeves, knee sleeves, knee wraps, and and that process was actually a lot more intensive than what I thought it would be, uh, because I'm 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 really picky. Uh, Does it have to be certain kind of materials and stuff? It all like, has to be something special. Not, yeah, maybe special is not the right word, but it has to be the way I want it. Uh huh. Uh, or everything about it, I just soon throw it in the trash. So did you, were you testing these products? Because I know you're going to talk about it, and I know it's like one of the big things that Invictus offers now but your sleeves and uh the the power sling right the oh, sling the Kraken the Kraken yeah and yeah. the Phoenix so all these words don't mean much to a lot of people and I'm gonna let him explain but I would imagine how you utilize that the material and everything is very very important because it can be very dangerous see especially well like the Kraken that's yeah. our heavy duty if you're familiar with the slingshot it's similar to that uh, we think it's a lot better than that, but uh, we just call it a bench assist. Bench assist. It, it's, it's, right. a, it's a wonderful overload tool. It'll allow you to take a, uh, if you're a 350 pound bencher, probably the first week you use it, you'll double 350. Wow. Maybe even triple. Okay. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to push on your bench press and to push that up without actually going a full motion with your bench press. Now, it's not the only thing you can do, mm -hmm. but it's an overload system that we designed to do after your bench press. At least a couple. I wouldn't do it every every week, uh, but every other week or at least once a month. Pretty much all of the powers that lifters like to overload in some way. Now they have to learn to use that, correct? Because yeah, it's, it's, it's very finicky. Yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen it's, I've uh, seen it in action, guys. Well, if you use a if you use a slingshot of any kind, uh, and you're not in a cage, yeah, or you're not using face savers or something, you're just an idiot. I mean, you're just stupid. Okay. You, <laughs> I don't know. There's that's not a whole lot of guys. Way. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> You I didn't have, want to touch a slingshot. I, I was about to say, I was, I was asking, no, because like, have you ever used one in I've all your one, fitness years? They're not really a tool I would warrant just to, like, the average lifter. Right. You know? We see, uh, see, I'm kind of backwards from that. I, we've used one so much that I would, especially somebody with a shoulder injury or something like that. And I, it, it puts everything into that perfect degree angle. It, it will hold your elbows where they belong. Mm. Most injuries are coming from people flaring. In That's the wrong, true. Right. Wrong, and it forces them to stay right there in that groove. But they have to learn to use it. And no, actually, no, 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 they don't really have to. like the Phoenix. The okay. One, yeah. The first time you take it down, it'll force you into the right spot. Oh, so, wow. So long as you're not fighting uh, the uh, Phoenix itself, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty straightforward. Now, the Kraken, yeah. uh, when it, it, it took me... Well, man, six, eight months. It took me six or eight months to get that. We had multiple mailings across yeah. the sea and send it back. And I don't know. We're not doing that. And and we ended up with, well, it's what 
at the time, I'm not sure about now, but at the time, it was the heaviest single ply material I could get. Wow. And so okay. uh, we've got competitors out there with two ply stuff, and it it goes down easier than our stuff does. So oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's heavy enough that I just refuse to make a two ply. Okay. Yeah, because because you asked for it. It's doing what it needs to do to the extent that you need. You're like, there's that's no right. reason we need to, like, beat a dead horse here. Like, it's doing well, the that's job. That's right. I mean, to jump up into a different, to a heavier uh, apparatus, you know, now I'm going to compete with all of these other guys in these shirts and these fancy shirts and the slingshot shirts. And, yeah. And I'm not really interested in that. I mean, I am an equipped lifter. I love that stuff. But I'm not interested in getting into that business. If you need to get into that business, call Kevin over it. Anderson Powerlifting. He'll take oh, yeah, he will. That's he's, very true. That's a wonderful man. He'll take wonderful yes. care of you. And he'll set you exactly into an FA or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and he'll take he'll take good care of you. And we just don't have time to add anything else right now. So Okay, so you're kind of at y'all's max of, like, yes, not really not. increasing new tools for the powerlifters or anything. Sure, Is without it? bringing on more hands. Yeah. And that's a struggle in itself so uh don't i know that it's tough well uh, we've been talking about this now we've i've got a wonderful Brittany uh pemberton that works down at the gym for me she's amazing i've trained her what is she mid-20s yeah she's got three mm-hmm. kids yeah started training her when she was 15 mm-hmm. she drank the kool-aid oh yeah and i know she, she did yeah I know you who you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just love her. We adore her whole family. Her tr- her kids call me Poppy. I mean, that I'm looking for people like that. Mm-hmm. If you're not willing to drink the Kool Aid, not really interested in there. Well, it's crazy how when you can, you know, you find in all these little niche like fitness industry, especially because it's such a vulnerable thing mm-hmm. to do. And like, you, you want to build a relationship with somebody, walk through hell with them. And something oh, like exactly right. something yeah. like powerlifting that is so intense that like For can sure. help you build that 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 foundation of a relationship and, and help you get so close with people. I feel like that's what so many people miss just in their their own fitness is they they miss that element. Right. Well, they, they miss so that community good. piece. That's yes. like, you know, people, I think, really felt as we got towards the end of COVID because everybody was like, I'm sick and tired of just doing virtual workouts or being on my own. Like, right. How are things know. different? Most people that if you're not involved with it, it's a it's a different it's a different attitude altogether. I, I tell I tell people all the time, powerlifting is what church is supposed to be. <laughs> it's that kind of yeah. relationship among them. I mean, I may be competing against you, uh, but as far as like trying to jinx you or something, that's never gonna happen. I will help you beat me. It's not that I don't want to beat you, because yeah. I do, and I'm too bad. <laughs> yeah. But when I beat you, I want you at your best. Yeah. No excuses. I just want to beat you. Right. And and I will do anything for you to get you to that spot. And this is the only sport in the world that I know of that's like that. That's it's, so true. The camaraderie. When I first crazy. when I first kind of got involved with athletes and powerlifting it was kind of shocking because I remember like my first sporting event going to a powerlifting meet and going, no one person is the same. And yet the thing that was the common denominator was the community Mm -hmm. uh, with powerlifters. And kind of like what you're saying is it's very interesting to watch them all uh, train together and compete together. And you just, you don't see that in a lot of sports. I mean, I work with all kinds of athletes all day, every day. Right. And I don't see it with my runners. I don't see it with my football players, you know, because, and I would, I would say a lot of the reason why is because even in these other sports, there's different like sex of that sport, right? You could be at 800 meter, you could be a mile runner, you could be right. all these different things. Even in football, you're in different positions, right? In powerlifting, you perform three movements. <laughs> That's all you do. And you might train differently to get there, but I would, you know, I would probably say a lot of them stick to the same style of training. 
um, from what I've seen in the recovery realm, because mm-hmm. I'm always encouraging them to maybe step outside of that a little bit to do some different things that aren't just powerlifting, yeah. uh, just so that we can reduce injuries. Um, and maybe that might be another thing that they have in common injury. <laughs> That's he a said it, for he said he liked the pain. I've <laughs> yeah. never met a power lifter in my life that didn't say they like the pain. It's true. You got, you got to definitely have that takes the you. time. It's, it's, yeah, it's different. If you're afraid of getting hit in the face, this thing's not, this is not your game. Uh, Cause sooner or later, so one of your buddies is going to hit you in the face. It's going to happen. I was thinking about it too. You brought up like other sports, like a lot of, especially the higher level that you go, mm-hmm. right? The more, Obviously, you work together as a team because you're playing on a team in a lot of sports. Powerlifting is kind of different. We're like, you know, you're kind of training together as a team, but then you're competing. Then you're competing on your own. Well, well, I would say to some own to some own merit, right? Like, because you're trying to beat the person next to you. Well, but but like in with me especially, uh, we would move with twenty, thirty people sometimes, And, and. Yes, one person's in the front at a time, mm-hmm. just kind of like one receiver's it. It's his turn, right? And, and but it really, we all move together. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else. Like, in whether it's tennis or golf or blah blah blah, whatever sport we're talking about, most of the time those athletes keep their secrets. Mm-hmm. It's really important to them. Mm-hmm. But you would be, or well, she wouldn't, but you'd be shocked at how many times I would get calls. And ask a question, and I would say, just, just call Ariel over. Yeah, just go, just drive up there. Whatever she tells you, just do it. And I know I wasn't the only one no, pushing that's people. No, very mm-hmm. first. Very because true. I mean, she did exact. She understood. Well, she's a little bitty girl, but I mean, she'd just about bring you to tears. <laughs> she'd do exactly I what know. I needed to do. And where I, I hear you talk a lot about. You know, th- that was uncomfortable. No, that hurt. A power lifter is different in the fact that they don't want it uncomfortable. That's irrelevant. I need it to hurt. I need you to get in there to where nobody else has ever been. And I need you to do something nobody else has ever done. And that's a place she really shines. But we share that information. We move that information around to where them, where everybody can benefit for you. Because like, like I said, it's it's an individual sport that you can play it by yourself, but you won't be good at it. I would agree because even in competition, yeah. like um, I would say come to the proving ground for an SPF event versus maybe Ozark Iron for an event because the uh, atmosphere is just a little bit different. And what I mean by that is even though, you know, David's saying, OK, like, let's say it's your turn. Um, it's your turn because you were, you'll hear Dawn say, okay, this person's up second, third, fourth. Okay. Always saying those names. You're, you're amongst them. Yes. You go up there, you perform. And then guess what? You're right back in the crowd with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And they're all talking and they're all slapping each other on the back there. And always, you will never not see this amongst any of the spotters, loaders, judges, and competitors, them going, Hey man, I noticed this. Hey, on your next one, try this. Right. It's it's so beautiful. And I think it's something that people just have to experience because on the outside, I remember when I first went, I was like shaking in my boots, yeah. not to mention a hundred pounds, like surrounded by big people. Um, but I was like, this seems crazy. And even the mindset that David's talking about, you know, sometimes I see it a lot with athletes, but definitely power lifters. There's, there's almost this caliber of like, I need you to hit me in the face, meaning I need this it needs to get through to me. Mm-hmm. So when they're on my table, I have to get through to them. I have to speak power lifter. Um, I was saying this past weekend when we were at GP Athletics, I said, you know, you're at a, a, a power lifting event. And I wanted to take a picture at every event going forward and make it a meme. Um, how do you know you're at a power lifting event? And you just see like these massive men just congregated. And when do you ever see 
that ever. <laughs> you don't. And I want to make it a thing. I want like people to mean these photos of like, how do you know you're around powerlifters or you're at an event? Just take a picture yeah. of these dudes. And they're, they love each other. They support each other, even if they're competing against each other. I cannot tell you in my gym, and I mean, I'm, I'm really the small, one of the smallest powerlifters that would ever compete in my gym. And, you know, and I was in the 220s. But you would see 300 and 400 pound giants coming through, stopping their sets to go help some kid or some old person or somebody, some college kid that was just a screw up and not, that never seen anything. And I'm just here. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just here trying. It would stop what he was doing and go over and help him. Mm -hmm. Can I show you something? But, and, you know, and go through that step. It's, I'm telling you, something about powerlifting, it, not only, which I, I personally believe, I'm sure we'll get to this sometime, it's the middle of everything. I don't care what sport we're talking about, powerlifting is the middle of everything. Can yeah, you explain that? Yeah, I would love to. I would I, yeah, we're down. I'm well, very I'm, curious. I'm not, I'm not talking so much about putting, you know, a thousand pounds on your back. But the big three, the main movements, yes. in some way, they're just almost unbeatable, in my opinion. Whether we're talking about, you know, uh, y'all had a cyclist on last week. I've seen cyclists. They're powerless. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, when they're in the gym, mm -hmm. they're about the strength. Now, they may be focusing more on their legs than they are their upper body. Right. Okay? But they're still bench pressing in some form, or they're still doing dumbbell pressures and some we're still doing power lifting movements mm -hmm. to get us to that point you know I, we've got bikini girls uh -huh. fitness ladies everybody's power lifting you know if you start looking on the on the posters that are up in your gym those those beautiful ladies and their this rocking bodies that they've worked their whole life for they did not get that on a treadmill, boys and girls. <laughs> right. Did not happen like that. Right. Well, I definitely would agree that like strength is definitely the yes. the it's epitome. The it's the epitome of yes, or, or rather, I guess strength is like you're saying is the middle that what what creates a foundation for all athletics, and uh, powerlifting is like the epitome of strength. That is, That's... you've gone fully to that side. You've committed. You've committed mm -hmm. to yeah to to. Uh, optimizing right getting really really Short. strong yeah really strong yeah I, I would completely agree because lucas i mean that's why we we talk about lifestyle strength i mean not within just fitness but lucas talks about it a lot like that's what he does as a personal trainer yeah. in the value of strength and it's the foundational piece for everything it's uh if i'm out hiking can i lift my buddy who broke their ankle and haul him out Oh, no, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it correlates to life. Can I do functional movement, right? Can I be strong mentally? Because we were talking a lot about that, you know, on our podcast and even just within the, the realm of powerlifters. And I think something that you keep talking about and, and what I'm trying to get across is, isn't it beautiful that we have not mentioned when we talk about the strength of a powerlifter we haven't really even necessarily broken down their physical strength other than to say they're big people. <laughs> like they are massive. Their no, yeah, right? We haven't been talking about their number. Like number not... is irrelevant. Exactly. Yeah. And like, doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter, right? And then we th we started talking about the character of the power, power lifter. You almost have to separate, like when you say power lifting, right? Like you have to separate when you're talking about a competitor who's a sport where obviously like the number matters to the degree of the sport, but the method, the mm. the system in which you will go about choosing to be strong and be fit and, you know, obviously something you're very passionate about. Right. Like that number doesn't matter because you see that you've seen the little number, you've seen the middle number, you've seen the big numbers, That's you've right. seen them all. And guess what? Everybody's working on the same thing. They're working on the same three movements. They're all wanting to be better. They're all wanting to be stronger. They're all mm -hmm. wanting to help each other. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. This happened just this last week. Uh, I, gee, I really want to use his name, but I don't know if he'd think it's cool. So I won't. Okay. But I've watched him lift now for years and years. Mm -hmm. And he's never going to set an all-time record. Never going to happen. I know who you're talking about. He's, 
He's just not genetically gifted in that way as geometry is wrong. Uh, now, he's going to set some set state records, no doubt, but he's just not that caliber of athlete. But he won't quit. And he keeps pounding. And every time I see him lift, he gets better and better and better and better. And his numbers are coming up some, but at a much different level. And I'm telling you, he was one of, he was the joy for me to watch this last weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just stomped the ground. And for me personally, you know, I get to see a thousand pound squats not expressive to me anymore. Right. Yep. It's, I, I've seen so a thousand. Of perspective, right? Yeah, I've seen a thousand pound squats so many times, it's ridiculous. Now, if you want to impress me, let's, let's get up in there in the 12 and 1300s. I'm getting impressed now. You know, it's the same way with the bench press. But now I'm telling you, this man, that was impressive because he continually improves. And really, that's what powerlifting is about. Until we hit the pinnacle, it's about improving yourself. And that's one of the reasons why I think that it translates over into anything. I mean, if, if we were working with a golfer, that doesn't have anything at all to do with power. Really. It does, too. It just has to be a, come into it a different way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, but it's still powerlifting. You're still trying to get stronger. Mm -hmm. You're tr still trying to get more explosive. You're, you're still trying to put all of these uh, cards on the table. You're trying mm -hmm. to play everything you can play. And that's really what I mean when I say it touches everything. Now, even us, when we were competing at a high level, and I mean working towards all-time records, we did the big three, and then we went and bodybuilt. We did that for hypertrophy. You know, we did that just moving blood. You know, and we did some crazy things. We had a blast, mm -hmm. you know, but we did that for, for health reasons, you know. So even then, you know, I've got girls that will come in and they'll be honest with you. It's like, I, I just, I'm a nice legs and a cute butt. It, well, that's valid. It's just, it is <laughs> what it is, you know. Okay, let's squat. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go, you know. And then we're going to lunge until you fall over dead. <laughs> <laughs> but they we do the even same thing with our power liquor. Mm -hmm. We squat. And then we go lunge until we fall over dead. Yeah. You know, so it, it's all tied together. So now that we've been talking a lot about powerlifting, can you tell me, you keep mentioning injuries, and I, I want to know that backstory because you subtly mentioned it at the beginning of the podcast, like, oh, yeah, fun for me, yeah, um, because you have some records out there uh, in powerlifting, and what did that look like, the pinnacle of kind of your success and the evolution of fitness and sports and then injuries for yourself? As far as my injuries go, uh, God really blessed me. He, he really did. Uh, I was hurt years and years ago uh, on, a, on a deadlift platform. I, I hadn't even been lifting that long. Uh, I had a hip come out literally on the platform and I'm laying there and that's where Jamie came in. He, Oh really? Yeah, he was there. Uh, the meat director was, he was a real, butt. uh, he just was interested in getting me off the platform, but, uh, I'll never forget Jamie jumping up and we'll move him when I'm ready to move him. Yeah. He was kind of the butt. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, I was going to say, because he seems like such a nice guy, I, I, that that would be interesting to see that moment where he, like, stood his ground and he was like, no, listen. Jamie's a great guy, and he mm -hmm. is. He's real passive. He's real He's real mm -hmm. soft. But if you get in the way of one of his athletes, especially, he's smart. Jamie, you don't realize until you really know Jamie how smart he is. And uh, he knew I was hurt. And uh, he wouldn't want to take no crap off nobody. And he made that real clear to everybody. He was just like, okay. Yeah, that'll be fine. We'll, we'll, whenever you're ready, we'll, we'll continue on. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he brought me. He, you know, it took months before I could even walk right. Uh, the doctors told me that they wanted to do surgery, and that freaks me out. It still freaks me out today. I won't lie. I don't like. I don't like people. I've been cut on multiple times. I don't mm -hmm. like it. That's nice. But uh, so we started. That's really. 
you know, we talk about injuries and how bad they hurt us and stuff, but that was probably the biggest blessing. If the Lord was going to say, David, I'm going to help you be a great power lifter. So it hurt me. And so it um, immediately took my weakest spot, and now that's all I can do. Um. I wasn't a good bencher. I was a very, very average bencher. And so for two years, it took me two years to rehab my hip back. Wow. And then I was still had to, that's where I got into equip lifting, because I simply couldn't squat. I could front squat. Uh-huh. Uh, but I couldn't back squat at all. My hip would pop. Uh, they say it's it's slightly that it's out of it's not out of socket. Now the ball and the socket don't match. Huh. So like not a dislocation. No, oh no, it dislocated that day. Okay, but it never fully went back. Yeah. So functionally, it does not move properly. Uh, it does so long as I don't have eight hundred pounds in my back. Okay, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing that a power lifter does, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. It, yeah. Right. You know. So. I just kept rehabbing because I knew if I stopped, you know, I'd be in a bad way. Because he said eventually I probably wouldn't walk right. Wow. And I was like, what? Uh, bull crap. So perseverance was necessary. You had to endure the discomfort. I'm also assuming you spent some time on your bench that was mediocre because you weren't being able to do your squats. Then you also found the suit in that Process. Justin Rogers was my training partner all yes. the way up to the all-time world record. Did not know that. That's uh, awesome. If, and if I started lifting again, he would do it again whether he wants to or not. Uh, he, I, I believe it. Uh, no, he he would do anything <laughs> that we asked him to do. But, uh, no, we were benching, either benching or some kind of a bench assist, something, three times a week. The other two days we were doing back. And then but all of my rehab stuff was done other times. Justin was still doing legs and stuff, but he was done it at other times. Right. Uh, we worked on my bench for two years straight. Did you ever feel like, and we've talked about it maybe a little bit with injuries, but did you ever feel like when you were having to do rehab stuff with the legs and the hip that you were just like, I know I can do more. Like I've done more before and almost feel mediocre because I know when my injury happened I definitely was like but I could do more I mean I can't do more right now but I know I could do more does that make sense where I feel like I would almost feel like I was cutting myself short or I'd feel a certain way about myself because I wasn't where I thought I wanted or needed to be when in fact it was where I needed to be that's where my own personal stupidity came in though is because I, that's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. I would push on myself. I would go too far, and then I'd have to come back and start again. Mm-hmm. And it took, you know, I, if I knew then what I know now, I probably could have cut that two years and a half. But it took you having to experience that to figure that out. It really did. It it really did to teach me to slow down, and it helped me through a lot of my later injuries that just come from the poundage, all of my the poundage, the wear and age. tear, yeah. yeah. You know, so it taught me to slow down, and it really brought me to a point to where if something didn't feel right, I'm done. You know immediately, too, what that yes. feels like. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think a lot of people, whether they're getting into powerlifting or just lifting weights in general, they're scared about the getting unknown. injured, mm-hmm. right? Or whether it's the unknown or just they just, you know, have no idea where to start or right. what to do. Yeah. So they don't uh, do nothing, and they go home, and, and so they don't even hurt their back, and then they still get hurt. <laughs> and so that that's the point, right? Is that usually yes. like injury usually happens due to something stupid, right. whether it's environmentally stupid or it's exactly. your own stupidity, right? Yes. So either you can learn the skill and be a little bit more prepared via strength mm-hmm. and some development to deal with the injury when it happens, because it's gonna happen, or you can be weak and stupid. And still have to deal with the injury, right? And be, able, and be be off in a lot worse boat than we're you would go, be. We're going to deal with the yeah, injury. It's yes. gonna, it doesn't matter. Every single one of my clients that gets injured, it's never in the gym. It's oh, I was picking up sticks in my yard. Mm-hmm. Or, yes, yes. You know, I was that, playing with my kid. You know, yeah. I use the toothbrush. I've actually seen that twice. Somebody gets seriously back injured brushing their teeth. 
Wow. It's the picking up the socks for me. And as somebody who's all in recovery, I try to remind people. um, And what y'all are kind of talking about is exposure. Like, and we've talked about this in the past on an episode, you're either going to suffer from something or for something. And you get to decide, right? So if you're going to experience injuries, uh, exposure is what we've chosen to do. Mm -hmm. We've chosen to put ourselves in an environment where we're exposing ourselves. We're also building that body awareness. And when people come in, most of the time they come in when they are at rock bottom and they've injured themselves. Mm -hmm. And inevitably, you know what they tell me? But I was only picking up a sock, Ariel. And I say, but what were you doing for the six months of the year before that? That's right. Because really, that's what's dictating that moment. And you and I could say, well, we probably could have avoided that or maybe not. But at least we had exposure. At least we 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 are equipped now. We've gotten ourselves a personal trainer. We're in a gym. We we have recovery people in our corner. And so that's where I would say, like you're saying, regardless, you're going to inevitably get injured. But how are you going to be able to approach it? Yeah, right? it's not that we're chasing injury, right? Right. It's no, not like not we're trying all. to That's, make it happen. Yeah, no. You're just recognizing reality. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, though, that the closer we get to injury, the stronger we are? I mean, right up to the line where you hurt yourself, that's where you're your very strongest and in almost every way. Mm-hmm. It, but then when you don't know yourself, when you don't know when to say, whoa, mm-hmm. wait a minute. Okay, we're done today. I'm going home. That's when we step over the line. Every injury, especially competitive injury in the powerlifting circle that I've ever seen, is because we did something stupid and we went farther than the paper said, yeah. farther than the trainer said. We ignored the signs. Yeah, That's right. that body awareness you know? is up there. Yeah. What do you call it? You had a word for it on one of our episodes, kind of hitting that that pinnacle or that level at that moment for what you can achieve that day or that week or that month or that year. Um, I, it'll come I just to think me, of but... it like zones, right? Like there, there's this, there's a zone. So if we just talk like exercise in general, right, we could mm-hmm. go do some exercise and a brisk walk is considered exercise, right? But that's not necessarily uncomfortable. So especially for, you know, somebody, an athlete, right? right. A brisk walk's probably not it for the person who's, 350 pounds and never exercised day in their life that might be really uncomfortable right and they might be exposed to injury whether they may be rolling their ankle or passing out from the blood <laughs> yeah, pressure because right. they never had exercise right right but it's just a matter of perspective they're in their zone of uncomfortability versus the athlete well that's nowhere close right, right? they need to push that much further and so once you find that zone of that that line of like okay well this is what i can tolerate then it's a it's uh, exactly what you said, David. It's kind of this uh, practice, this teeter-totter, where you're starting to recognize, okay, well, that's pain, and that is really pain. Because mm-hmm. when you feel pain, you know it, right? Yes. It's not If you have to question it, it's probably not pain. You're probably just being really sensitive. No, no right? that's right. A hundred percent. But mm-hmm. when you feel pain, you know it. And yes. so as you get those little small things here and there that don't fully disrupt your routine – but they're like, you're like, ow, well, that really actually hurt. Okay. That's that's when you know, like, I've pushed past that zone of uncomfortability mm-hmm. and we started reaching into pain and we need to back off. No, Otherwise, no, that's right. we're, we're always chasing uncomfortability because yeah. that's and where growth happens. Be rec- There's so much that you have to be able to recognize right there. You know, you know, am I being sissy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and is, does this hurt? Am I being injured? Mm-hmm. There's a big difference right there. Mm-hmm. After my injury, after I started squatting, after I started getting heavy, uh, I passed out 30 or 40 times, literally, deadlift. It puts me in a bad spot. I can't get away from it. That's where it happened. In the, I can't get away from it. Sure. But I'm in briefs. Okay. So I'm in equipment. Yeah. It's not coming back out. It's not possible. Yeah. It's forced back into its joint. So the pain's not hurting it. It just freaking hurts. It, it's just the nerves that are in there. They're damaged. Right. They'll always be damaged. I'm not going to be able to fix those. I say that maybe they'll fix themselves. Some, but I kind of... <laughs> and preferably oh, no. it, it might, but it might not. The right. reality is once that nerve is damaged, it's giving your uh, brain false feedback. So essentially what you're saying is it's not the movement itself or the weight that I'm using. It's 
I've already damaged that area of my body and my nerves are, regardless of what's going on, going to tell me you're hurting. It's your personal and feedback system. Yes. Yeah. So he, yeah. It so took he, me years to pull through that. So you have to discern between that now, unlike maybe other people who've never experienced a chronic injury, and versus what is actually new pain to you, right? Like you have oh, to make right. that discernment. Again, some people never experience that. I know what that feels like now with my injury. Yeah. And eventually a lot of um, athletes do experience that. But at the end of the day, what we're saying is sometimes you have to have exposure to know. Yeah. It's kind of like, I, as you were saying that, I'm sitting here thinking about it. And it's like coffee. And stay with me because I know that sounds weird. When you, our, our tastes are really powerful, like when we eat foods. Huh. So if you were to drink coffee mm -hmm. for the first time as a kid, you're probably like, why do people drink this? Right. right. Like it's bitter. That our senses, exactly our environment right. are t is telling us, ooh, don't drink that. That's bad. That's not good for you. It's, you know, X, Y, Z. You shouldn't have that. And then you give it a little bit of time and you start to, to you start to, well, you connect the dots between how coffee makes you feel from the caffeine, from the mm -hmm. stimulation in your bowels, like makes you go. Like a lot of people love that, that feeling. Yeah. I personally love the caffeine feeling, right? And then you associate now the taste with that feeling and you didn't get poisoned like it didn't right. didn't hurt you it's one so so now <laughs> then you then you it's start wonderful. then you start liking it right yes. and so it's the same thing if you've had an injury like that yes you almost have to relearn that like hey i can do this movement mm -hmm. because you know you everything's telling you like or at least the metrics or from an outside perspective, objectively, this is okay for you to do. Right. And you can relate this back even to not injury. Somebody right. just get involved in fitness when it's painful. I'm doing air quotes. For yes. The, you can't, it's, because it's, it's, it's when not it's real painful because mm -hmm. it's not real, right? It's just yeah. really uncomfortable. And there's this huge benefit on the other side of it, but you mm -hmm. have to experience it once, twice, three times. You might just have to experience years. it for years mm -hmm. before you start to rebuild that pathway that this is something that's really, really good Here's for Here's the difference. I think most people are not concerned with bringing their body into submission. I can tell you mm -hmm. when I command my body, it does what I want it to do mm -hmm. or it breaks, but we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. it, it'll make me angry if it doesn't. <laughs> you can ask my wife, my training partners, it doesn't. If I, yeah. it, we're going until I pass out or until something breaks. And, but most people are like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, I was, you know, I was probably in my fifties before I really grasped a hold of Dave. That's kind of weird, <laughs> but, but I think as athletes, no matter what sport we're talking about, yeah. when you can come to that point where the most important thing to you is bringing your body under submission. And I mean, really commanding it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you hit it, it hits back. Mm -hmm that kind of changes it because I can remember pulling in the pain literally being in my toes and feeling it in the back of my head from the hip and me th thinking to myself don't you let go don't you let go don't you let go because I know it's not coming out we all know it's not coming out and I got me I got hundreds of videos and the guy, you can see the guys leaning forward off. Of course, because they think you, they're ready <laughs> for you to pass speaking, out. Yep. You know, well, there'd come a point where my whole body would start shaking mm -hmm. because I couldn't pull anymore. Uh, I was literally at a point of failure. But in the pain was, I, I was gone. I, I, it's not that I would passed out, but uh, everything just goes dark for a second. And you just keep coming. You just keep coming. No matter what this costs me, I'm not stopping today because I can't get hurt. I know I can't get hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to come back out. There's no way. I've got on a set of ends or briefs or tightened brief. It's not coming back out. Just keep pulling. Hey, mm -hmm. this is about you. You know. So you just kind of override kind of what that hip is telling you in that moment. Well, it took forever. Yes. Yeah. But that's, mm -hmm. that's what you had to do with that injury. You know, can I just say oh, this? Yeah. It, I think it... I think that unless somebody has had a chronic injury or even maybe a neurological injury, they would hear what you're saying and going and, and they would go, that's just absolutely nuts. But the reality is you're either going to submit to that or you are going to be that person 
that says, I'm going to go ahead and overcome this. And overcoming it doesn't mean that you wake up the next day and you're great. And everything that you've done in PT just means that your body is how it was before. That doesn't mean that. It means that you persevere and you have found a new you, who you are. You embrace Uh, the suck. Yeah. Oh, yes, you do. Absolutely. I always tell people, sucks to suck. Sometimes it just sucks to suck, but you still do it, right? You still persevere. Sometimes it sucks to win. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Literally, you just went through a bunch of suck to win. (laughs) Yes. Well, I mean, there's none of us have ever won anything (laughs) worth winning and it not suck. Yeah. I mean, we prepare ourselves for that. We push into that. And I mean, I like the silly thing with the pain. Uh, we're talking about deadlift here, but I suck deadlift, y'all. I suck at it. It's my favorite lift. I love everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> I would give away my all-time squat. I, I've, I've had some really good bench presses. Uh, I would give them all away for a 700-pound deadlift. I really would. It's just never going to happen. Yeah. But, I mean, I sat there at a 500-pound deadlift for years. Until I learned how to grasp all of this. And then it began to climb. And it began to creep up. As the I as I embraced the pain, mm-hmm. as I could brought that body into submission and I was able to move it forward, then I became, you know, uh, well, I became an average deadlifter for what I was doing. Well, but, but, but the point is, is that you got a little better each time. So I would imagine the guy that you saw this weekend that's that is the draw to you you're like man he's me like that's what we're doing out here it those numbers look small compared to other people or maybe it's not my big goal but the reality is is you're continually improving see Uh, i think he's better than me i think he's much better than me because he doesn't have i mean immediately when i came back my best press went boom he's a bencher second that i started squatting my squat began to just automatically boom, 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 boom. Uh, his isn't, his, his, they're not doing that. I mean, he's been in there years at the same little number. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he'll come up a little and he'll come down a little. But the fact that he just keeps swinging, yeah, he just keeps hitting it, that's freaking awesome. I mean, that's the pinnacle of what we do. Uh, you go to a Ray Williams world record squad or, Whatever, you know, Jimmy Kobe's bench. It does none of this matters. Those guys, I've talked to them. They work like that, and they've got the talent. Right, right. So they have that they mindset have the talent to mm-hmm. lean on, right, to force them to work. Mm-hmm. I was a, I, I, I don't like squat, but I'm a good squatter, and so I did it. Mm. That allowed me to have the encouragement to continue to push on the deadlift it's a this is a mental game no matter what anybody ever tells you guys in here powerlifting it's not about physical strength it's not we got old ladies flipping cars off kids it's not a strength thing mm. it's true this is a mental thing yeah. so once you can grasp a hold of that kind of step back and kind of look at everything else and it's like so i'm curious david what We've been talking a lot about this, and obviously, like you mentioned, you had a construction company before you started mm-hmm. Invictus in your gym, Proving Ground. Why, why do all this? Why, why? What's what is your why? What's your personal why with powerlifting, and for you, what drives you? Well, I got started just because of an injury. I went back to the gym. I lifted in high school. Went back to the gym uh, after the construction company. Uh, that's where this original injury in my shoulder. Mm-hmm. Uh, why? It's challenging. It's different. Most people never put a challenge in front of them. You know, I mean, my challenges now are this different. Uh, and we can talk about those, but everything about powerlifting, like the man we're talking about, it's it has nothing to do with a number. Nothing. Jimmy is not looking for a 1,500-pound bench press to impress you or me. Mm-hmm. It's about him. Right. He's pushing on him. And that's what I love the most about it. That's what keeps me in power. Yeah. It's the only thing that I haven't gotten bored with in my life. 
So it's okay, not... so maybe let's be honest. That's, <laughs> that's, the, real. that's, the, that's the real life. <laughs> Having gotten bored with it, it's a challenge. So, that you know, that leads me into this question before we wrap up. Um, what's the big, what's, what big project do you have going on? We always like to ask people, what is Invictus up to? What's SPF up to? What's, uh, what's I kind of already know, guys. I'm super excited. What's coming up? Well, I think SPF is, it, it's really blowing up right now. Uh, of course, it's changed, changed hands. Yeah. Now. The, the guys are taking care of it. So far, they're doing, done a great job. Uh, and everybody was worried that they were going to mess with me, but, you know, that hasn't happened at all. They've been mm-hmm. very supportive of us. We run about 25, 26, I think we're at 26, 26 meets this year. Uh, and next year will be more than that because I've got other people coming on. Wow. So we run a lot of meets. Uh and that's exciting. I enjoy watching that grow. Now, Invictus Powerlifting, it just continually eases forward. The Invictus Iron Works, which is where all of our monoliths, and uh, yes, we own a welding shop as well, and we build equipment yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's about all I can handle. Uh, but now what she's talking about and what, what's going on big right now is the Arkansas Strength Expo. Uh, it's the biggest sporting event, as far as I know, outside of Razorback football. Mm-hmm. Here in Arkansas. <laughs> is. Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking for that number. I, I want to take Arkansas. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful event. We will have two different uh, powerlifting meets going on. The NPL will be there. The SBF is there. Uh, we've got Olympic weightlifting, mm-hmm. arm wrestling. Uh, the strongman is there. Uh, there's bodybuilding in there. There's vendors and everything yes. running away. Uh, Competitor's Edge will be there. Mm-hmm. Yes, we will be there. We'll be set up. Come when and where? Us. When is it? It's in Little Rock, Arkansas. It's at the Arkansas State Fairgrounds, June the 29th. Um, it'll be all day. There'll be a lot of stuff. And the gates will open at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll still be getting everything going. Lifting will start at 9. So... Uh, It'll be a, that'll be a heck of a day. Sounds like a lot of fun. Where can people go to get tickets, or is it free? Or? Uh, well, as far as door tickets, you can just walk right up. They'll they'll take them right there in the front. As far as competing, uh, the competitors, whether, you know, I call whichever one of those you want, you can go to Invictus Powerlifting. Uh, you can get online and uh, uh, look at the Invictus Powerlifting's uh, Instagram page. All of the information's on there. Of course, Arkansas Strength Expo has... A page and everything. Uh, Dawn takes care of that, mm-hmm. and you know, about every week now, everything's going to get run. So, right. Uh, so, whether awesome. you're wanting to sign up for strongman powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, all of that, all of that information, because you've got individual people kind of running all of these events, right? right? And guys, just to get a bigger picture, this is a massive building, and all of these events are going on at the same time while expo booths are set up um and then the fairgrounds are so nice they always have people they doing the care they take great have. care of us yeah. every year right they've got food they've got drinks they take care of the trash they've got great security i mean mm-hmm. all of it is all in-house in one massive building it's a great great time let me encourage you if you're not a power lifter or arm wrestler or you're not involved in one of these sports Still, if you're in a strength sport of any kind, mm-hmm. any kind, and you're interested in maybe bringing in an event, see, I'm looking, Nick, this is the last, you don't know this yet, this is the last year that this is a one-day event. Oh. Next year, we've already booked it for two. Wow. So we are looking for events, and, and not just events that, that David wants to uh, see or be involved with, but I, I want events that everybody at you know, uh, so if you've got an idea, bring it to me. I'm yeah. pretty open to those kind of things. If you know vendors, uh huh, vendors are always, for some reason, that where we struggle, it's hard to get vendors to come in. So uh, get w- with me on Instagram or Facebook or wherever, and let me know if you've got an idea for a vendor. Yeah. Well, I'd be stoked to hear it. I would. One thing uh, I would say is last year we had um, not acrobatics. What do we have? Acro yoga, like that was included as a a setup of of a team came in. And then on top of that, even if you aren't going to be a vendor or you don't have an idea, 
if you are interested in learning about any of these sports, there are oh, so yeah. many, like we talked about this at the beginning of the podcast, there are so many people that are passionate and eager and loving that want to involve you. They want you to love their sport just mm-hmm. as much as they love their sport. So like come out, experience it. Oh yeah, the the arm wrestlers last year. I know. <laughs> they spent four hours mm-hmm. just walking people through, working with them. Personal training for four hours working with people out there. These people want you involved. It doesn't matter what your sport is. Come out, check it out. Uh, I promise you, you'll have a good time. It'll get loud. Yeah, it's going to get real loud. Sounds awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for coming on, Devin. All right. Until next time. Peace. See ya. Peace out.